All right, everyone, we are going to get started with our TKNK Parent Information Webinar. Uh, I want to start out by sh uh, making sure that any of our families that need interpretation uh, know how to switch to be able to hear the presentation in Spanish. We have our interpreter here, Mrs. Simonini, and she'll be doing our Spanish interpretation. So you should see um, on the bottom of your screen that interpretation, it looks like a little globe. And uh, you would click on that, click on Spanish, and then click mute original audio. I also wanted to share that we will be actively answering uh, questions in the Q&A in the chat. So you'll see a Q&A, it's two speech bubbles together. So if you um, have any questions, please put them in there. Uh, do know that most that all of the other attendees will also be able to see your question. So don't include any like identifying information um, unnecessarily. I'll give everybody a couple minutes to check into the Spanish if they need it. All right, let's get started. So I first actually want to introduce all of us to you who are here on this webinar tonight. So my name is Dr. Dina Sellers. I am the Director of Elementary Education, which means that I'm basically the director of all of our elementary schools in CVUSD. Uh-oh, Mr. Follett. Hello, I'm Ryan Follett. I'm the district gen ed behaviorist for elementary. Good evening, my name is Mary Beth Stovall. I am the transitional kindergarten teacher on special assignment for the district. And then we're also joined by Magda Simonini, who is our interpreter tonight. So again, I just want to give you a warm welcome. Thank you for being here. This is the first time we've really ever offered uh, before TK or kindergarten gets started some uh, tips and tricks and information for parents. Um, I do want to preface this by saying I'm a parent. I have a 17-year-old and a nine-year-old, and I am not a perfect parent. I don't expect anyone to be a perfect parent. I'm not sure there is such a thing as a perfect parent. So even though we are providing you with some suggestions or ideas, I want you to know we are all humans and we will all sometimes not say the perfect thing or do the perfect thing, but these are really just suggestions, um, help, support for um, anything that maybe you hadn't heard before or just a way to back up something you know or just to give you some new ideas of something to do with your student to get ready for TK and kindergarten. So just know that these are supposed to be helpful and um, ways for us to just communicate to you what we have seen as being successful uh, for TK and kindergarten students when they start in TK and kindergarten in CVUSD. So this is our agenda for this evening. Um, most of our resources do come from First Five California. It's a great website if you want to check it out. So you'll see many of our resources from there. But we are going to talk about why TK and kindergarten are such important grades and why they're such an important time in uh, your students' learning, um, how to get ready for TK and K, the importance of reading together, uh, how to prepare for our first day of school and really their first Maybe their first time in school, or maybe they've already been in TK, but kindergarten will be a whole new place for them. And then we want to leave you with a quick reference sheet, uh, one, two, three, four, of things that we hope will be helpful reminders to you and uh, things to give you little tips on um, how to work with your student as they get ready to start TK and K. So this is actually a picture of one of our TK students in one of our schools. And you can just see the joy on the teacher's face, the joy on the student's face, because TK and K are just this very important journey into their education. 
So a little bit about TK and kindergarten. I think um, we feel that these first years are so adamantly important for kids to have their first adventure at a big kid campus. Maybe they've been to preschool, maybe they haven't. And finding their way onto an elementary school campus is an exciting thing. And in both TK and in kindergarten, they're going to develop the skills and the knowledge and the dispositions um, to help establish that foundation to be that lifelong learner. Our goal is that they come into our programs and develop a love of learning where they feel safe to take risks and feel a part of something that is bigger than them, but also feeling like they are a pretty important person on that campus. So, you know, that you're going to see a lot of strategic instruction, both explicitly done for kids and that which is maybe a little bit um, hands on or authentic. And most of all, we really focus on what's developmentally appropriate for this age child. So what might a day in TK look like? First of all, uh, the, the state has talked to, has set forth some guiding anchors, one of which is that the program be developmentally appropriate. So what does that mean? When it's developmentally appropriate, it means we're looking at, as the ages are changing and the, the enrollment ages are younger for TK kids, we're gonna be looking at kids who are four years old and turning five during their TK year. So there is, the, the state puts out the preschool framework, which we follow along and find about at 48 to 60 months, what a child is capable of. And we make sure our instruction is based around that. And when something is developmentally appropriate, that means that kids are usually building or creating with their hands and manipulating a lot of things. There isn't a lot of paper and pencil in TK because their little hands and the bones in their hands haven't really quite developed all the way. So we're working on ways to build our fine motor skills um, that might not necessarily involve as much paper and pencil. Another guiding anchor is the oral, oral language and literacy development. So our classes are rich in oral language. Every child that comes into TK needs to develop their language. They are learning how to communicate. They're learning how to ask for what they need. And so we spend a lot of time teaching kids, maybe we'll have them turn to a friend and tell them what their favorite ice cream is, but we'll actually have them say the sentence, my favorite ice cream is to help them develop those semantics of the language. The next guiding anchor is social emotional development. And sometimes I like to say that I feel like this is one of the most important things in TK because children at this age are still very egocentric. And what I mean by that is kids at this age think the world revolves around them. So maybe you're familiar with that in your house and it's normal, that is developmentally appropriate. So when they come into TK, we're helping them learn that there's a, a bigger world than just them. So we're teaching them how explicitly to use language when they're maybe feeling angry or frustrated. We work with them to learn those what, what those words mean and how to use them, how to interact with a friend when somebody takes their toy and they don't like it. So we often, you might hear, use your words as opposed to your hands or things like that. So we're teaching them all that very explicitly. We also expose the children to letters and sounds and numbers. So the key word there is exposure. We will be providing this direct instruction to your children. And the goal, however, is just to expose them. If they don't get it in TK, we hope they do. And most of them do by the end of the year, know their letters and sounds and their numbers to 20 or 30 but they'll have their year in kindergarten to finish up that, uh, to solidify that knowledge. We also have what we call purposeful play in our classroom. So purposeful play is when the teacher sets out an activity, say for instance, in a sensory bin, uh, letters and the children are pulling out the letters and they're sorting them by 
uh, letters that have lines versus letters that have curves. So the play, they're learning through that play, which is super purposeful, at, but and we have meaning behind it. And you could ask any teacher at any time, well, the reason why we're doing that is so that they're working on visual discrimination or how to match upper and lowercase letters, but we're doing it in a playful way. Mr. Rogers, I'm sure you're familiar with, says play gives children a chance to practice what they are learning. So we are very um, strong believers in TK that play is the way that children learn best. It's as how they ma master things and to become more independent for that matter. So what does a day in kindergarten look like? Well, you're going to see very similar things um, that you'll see in a TK class, but maybe it's taken up a notch. So where I referred to TK having that um, exposure in, t in kindergarten, they're going to be working off what we call a standard-based instruction. In California, we have something called our Common Core Standards, and the state has set out what each and every kindergartner should know by the time they finish kindergarten. So you will see the standard-based instruction we have in both programs have uh, district or district approved curriculum from our board of education that has been approved by the state. And so we're following that to make sure that the kids are getting exactly what they need in order to be ready to move on from kindergarten. You will also see a lot of small group centers in a kindergarten class and the kids are rotating to from group to group and they might look a little different in kindergarten in that the the product that the kids are doing in kindergarten are a little bit further involved than that of a TK child. So a teacher, for example, might have a journal out and the kids are working on writing their journals or practicing their writing a letter or doing some simple math. Um, I was actually just in a kindergarten class yesterday and the kids were writing three sentences by themselves. It was pretty amazing. So the, the growth that happens and the, the activities that they do in kindergarten are still appropriate for them, but they come a long way. You'll still see a lot of fine motor, things like learning to cut and color and gluing, not squeezing the entire glue bottle out all over the paper, learning how to draw simple pictures. And they're really working on that printing in kindergarten much more than they are because again, a year later, those bones have developed in their hands and they're that much more ready to start writing. Kindergarten still focuses on that social emotional learning. And it again is one of those important things that we're always using teachable moments to help these kids be productive citizens in our classroom and society to do their part, to be a good friend, to get along with one another to express how they're feeling and um, through appropriate means. We have in both kindergarten and TK, we follow a program called Sanford Harmony and um, the kids learn a lot through their friend Z, the alien who has never had a friend before. And so it's a series of helping kids learn how to become a good friend. So we wanted to give you just that quick snapshot of what it might look like um, in a TK and K class so that our recommendations for getting ready for TK and K uh, will make a little bit more sense um, just so you know what to expect also as a parent when they're going to school in TK and K. But we really also wanted to give you some ideas of things that you could do now, starting now, and maybe you're already through some of these, uh, that would give your student that preparedness for coming to TK or kindergarten. Maybe we even have heard the term kindergarten readiness, um, and that readiness really comes from some of the ideas that we're gonna share with you now. Um, and again, you may be doing many of these and some of these may be ideas that give you an idea of something to do with your student. So we're going to look at some of these activities, behaviors, routines that um, encourage your child to develop the skills that they'll really use in the classroom. So those first ones are going to be the social emotional learning. Um, so we really want to let your child play, um, do imaginary play, make believe, um, board games, cooperative plays, lots of different um, opportunities for your child to um, work with others, win, lose, um, get ready for all those things. You want to make sure you're reading books 
about kindergarten or school to them and then have discussions about it um, so they can start preparing on what a day in school will look like. We want to make sure we're encouraging independence throughout the day. Um, this could have mean you're having your child get dressed on their own um, with minimal help. You can have them help in the morning routine, small daily tasks um, like cleaning their plate or filling a water bottle um, just to get them in the routine. We want to also make sure we're starting to encourage those consistent hygiene habits. Um, teachers are going to ask the students to wash their hands. Um, so we want to make sure first they're able to do it, but also that they're willing um, and used to uh, washing their hands. The next area we're going to look at is language. Um, and one of the best ways to develop language with your child is to read um, everything with your child. Point out letters, point out numbers, um, shapes have them turn the page. Um, another great way is sing with them. Um, use those nursery rhymes, rhyming songs, um, repeating patterns, um, along with your own favorite songs um, is gonna help develop that oral language. Um, making sure you're uh, always talking with your child, um, giving them a synopsis about what the day is, um, talk about what you're doing, ask them questions. Um, and the next thing you can do is making sure you're giving them simple step-by-step -step directions to follow. For example, when cooking together, explain the steps you'd like your child to complete along the way. Um, so start with those single steps and then start building into first do this, then do that, and then start adding in um, more and more steps. The next area you wanna practice is motor skills. Um, we wanna practice those fine motor skills like cutting, opening bottles, trying to open up um, containers and the gross motor skills, those big body movements. Um, so we wanna do those big body movements by running, jumping, climbing, um, playing at the park, you know, getting out there and really moving. Um, we encourage those small, small muscle movements by doing things like stringing beads, building blocks, rolling Play-Doh, um, uh, practicing zipping up zippers, fastening shoes, snapping buttons. Those are all um, fine motor skills that are great to have um, and help develop that independence. Um, we wanna encourage writing using all types of materials. So practice playing with crayons, chalk, paintbrushes, pens, pencils, get them used to all the different um, materials they may come in contact with. Um, we wanna help them learn how to use the blunt tip safety scissors. Um, not how to just cut the, the, cut the paper, but also um, rules and safety around using scissors. Um, the last thing you can do, um, or sorry, you can also encourage drawing, coloring, um, talking about artwork together, um, and also work on practice writing their name. And again, there'll be some differences between TK and kindergarten. Certainly a student starting TK, especially a student with like a March birthday where they'll not turn five until March, writing their name is less important than recognizing their name or being able to see, notice the letters in their name. But if you have a student who's going into kindergarten, starting kindergarten, being able to write their name will give them a big uh, step up for starting the school year. Academics. How can you get your student ready for your academics? And like Dr. Sellers just said, a lot of this will be different between the two, but what's most important is that you are singing and reading and talking about the alphabet to your kids. And some of them might be ready to recognize the name of the letter in print, but if they don't, that's okay. You just talk about it. Um, we like to say that kids learn to read with their ears first. So before they're ready to actually read print, we wanna get them very phonologically aware. So doing things like rhyming and um, syllables and playing guessing games and just saying words, those are all things that you can do to help prepare them to learn about the alphabet. Talk about colors and shapes when you're out on a walk. You can say, hey, do you see that? green leaf on the tree or what color do you think that flower is things like that getting them aware in their environment kind of just making it a part of your day it doesn't have to be a hold up a flashcard, but more just using it in your environment and finding the ways to help your kids learn colors and shapes in kindergarten they count 
um, numbers up to 30. So, or actually, I think they count up to actually all the way up to 100 in kindergarten. In TK, it's 30. So just start counting. And, you know, those teen numbers are tricky. You'll hear that kids get, sometimes they get twisted up in those teens and that's okay. Just keep repeating it and giving them that, but counting out loud. And again, count your shoes as you're putting them into your closet or uh, count the number, how long it takes to brush your, you know, as somebody else is brushing their teeth, maybe we don't want them talking while they're brushing their teeth, but things like that, where you're just making it a part of their environment. It's fun and something that you can do. You'd be surprised when you're in the car. Let's count how many times we see a red light on the way to Target, or when we're in the grocery store, let's see how many things we take out of our cart and just make it a part of your daily routine. Something super important we feel is that you need to teach them their full name and especially what they're going to be called at school. Many of you might have a name other than their given name that you call your child. And when they get to school, we will get a record that has their legal name. So let them know or let your teacher know for sure if you call your child something differently um, than uh, what their legal record says, but make sure that they know what, that they have a first name and that they know even what your name is as the grown up. And even their phone number is something good for them to start remembering and memorizing as well. So, this area we created some do's and don'ts. Um, and this is going to be looking kind of at that social emotional learning, also some opportunities to work with your child on some of the things that are going to be presented to them in TK and kindergarten. So the first one is being consistent. Um, we want to make sure that we're not giving in to baking, crying, tantrums. Um, this is a great area to start setting expectations and following through because once they're in the classroom, uh, expectations are going to start being placed on them. Um, and so if it's the first time they're getting expectations placed, it's going to be a lot harder than if um, we start working on it now before it starts. Um, the next one is making sure you're using calm no neutral trumps. Um, we don't want to get compliance through anger, frustration, or yelling. Um, that's not how your teachers are going to be. Um, I'm sure that's not how you want them to be talking to your kids. So we want to make sure that they don't only follow directions when you're at an escalated voice or at a frustrated voice. Um, keeping it calm and neutral and following through is going to be your best bet. Uh, start using first then language with your kiddos. Um, so, you know, you let them know first we're going to finish dinner and then you get your ice cream. First we're going to clean up your crayons and then we can go play on the iPad. We want to make sure that we're presenting a uh, task first and then a demand following through. Getting them used to you know, something's gonna be presented and then the reward comes a little bit after. The last one is start to get ready um, for allowing disappointment, sadness, and frustration. Um, we don't wanna just automatically jump in and coddle the kiddos every single time um, they don't get their way. This is a good time to start allowing them to learn some um, coping strategies and getting used to maybe not getting the toy they wanted or the color they wanted. Um, so making sure that we're, we're giving them opportunities to face that before coming into school when that may be the first time they get that presented to them. I often think that playing board games, even simple board games like Candyland and Shoots and Ladders or, um, you know, even Go Fish, it's a chance to have them experience some frustration or disappointment at a low level. There's really no prizes. Um, or any high stakes things that they could be interested in. But you want to let them know, like, it's okay if something doesn't go your way, because inevitably at school, there will be things that won't be exactly the way that they expect them to be. And you want them to be able to cope with that when they're in the school environment. So this next slide is about screen time. And again, confession time, I my kids have iPads. I have an iPad. I have a phone, we all have phones. Uh, screen time is a necessity in our world, uh, especially for adults. And for kids, it's important for them to know and understand technology because we do have technology at school. And during maybe COVID, like when we were all home, there was a lot more screen time, a lot more technology in some homes, certainly in my home, as 
I was working remotely, it was very helpful and handy to have our kiddo, you know, be using their screen, watching a show or playing a game. So it's not to say that we're against screen time. And once your student starts school, they will have screen time at school. But we want to be careful that we're limiting screen time. Even in the classroom, we want to limit screen time. We wouldn't want a student on a screen for an extended period of time. And at home, it's important to try to do some of that limiting also. When they have screen time, make it quality screen time. They should be watching things that might be teaching them something, something, um, some new information for them. It can be something fun or funny, but being sure that you're exploring what they're watching on the screen and what kind of games that they're playing on their screen. I also want to talk to you about the YouTube trap. Um, I'm out in the community often, and I definitely see kiddos either with their parents' phone or with an iPad, and I can see that they're watching YouTube. And YouTube is a, a trap in the sense that once they start on one video, on the side of YouTube, new videos that they might be interested in start popping up. And so there's a couple issues with it. One is that if they don't like what they're watching, they just keep moving on to something new, which is unrealistic for them to be prepared for a classroom. We, the, we need to see things through to the finish when we're at school. The other problem is we're not exactly sure what they're going to click on next and if it's something that you would want them to be watching. So it's important to make sure that if they are watching YouTube that you have them in a particular channel that you've you know, screened and made sure that it's quality for your child. We often um, have students at school repeating what they watched on YouTube to us at school. And I wouldn't say that it's always appropriate. Watch shows with your kiddo. Screen time is fun. It can be fun for everybody. Um, if you're watching a show with them, then you can interact with them. Those language skills, talking to them about what's on the screen, drawing conclusions with them, making your own observations, singing. So if you if they are watching shows, make sure you're watching with them so that you know what the whole show is about and have opportunities for them to have language during a show. And then the last thing I wanted to share is that there is a time and a place for devices. If we are waiting for a long time, um, th in that moment, you may think like, okay, like I'm gonna give them my phone because they're maybe having a hard time and it's like an unusual situation. But if they're at the park, the park is for playing, the park is for climbing and swinging. A park isn't a place for them to necessarily be on a device so that they're not really experiencing the reason that you're at the park. But if they have to be in a doctor's appointment with you um, and it's really not for them, I, it, it'd be like reading uh, a little book. They can, I can understand why you would want them to maybe watch something on your phone. But just think in that moment, is this something where they could be looking around and learning something or doing something in this place you are? And so is it really necessary for them to have a screen? Uh, there's a couple questions um, specifically about screen time in the Q&A. What's the limit for screen time in school? I wouldn't say we have a prescribed limit, but in TK and K especially, you wouldn't find a student on a screen for more than 15 or 20 minutes, like through one center rotation. Our older students, like in fifth grade, fourth grade, they may be writing essays, they may be doing multiple assignments using their Chromebooks, so that would be a different amount of screen time and a different kind of screen time. Typically in TK and K, screen time might be playing educational games and might be them interacting with Starfall or ABC Mouse. There are um, other programs like um, Reading Eggs that some of our schools purchase. So really all of the screen time at school will be educational based programming for them to be doing something meaningful to practice the skills that we want them to practice. And then there's a question about YouTube kids. I can't say I always trust YouTube kids. We have found that YouTube kids can have um, inappropriate content or overly repetitive content. So 
I would still make sure that you're paying attention anytime they're on YouTube, even on YouTube kids. And then go to our next slide. So you've heard probably, I think three or four times, I wasn't counting already from us that we think that reading is so important. Uh, reading together is one of the gifts that you can give your child, not because you're trying to teach them to read, but because we can learn so much from books and we're really helping them connect spoken word to written word when as adults we're reading to them. So from our, our TK California resources and kindergarten resources, it's not only about reading, it's about being together, sitting close to each other. You're showing them that reading is important. It's more than just giving them a book to look at. It's really about you sitting with them and reading. They're going to be looking at the pictures. They're going to be listening to you. They're going to learn a lot about how books work. Um, they're going to learn that we read from left to right. We turn pages. We start at the top of the page. We read to the bottom of the page. They're going to learn about title pages of books. Uh, they're going to learn if you have an informational text, maybe there's page numbers. And so you can point out a lot of those text features even in a book. And they're going to also learn new words, new ideas, things maybe uh, that they hadn't thought about before. So our suggestion, not just before TK and K, but really all the way through the first years of elementary school is read to them every day. It can be hard to find time to read. So we wanted to give you a couple ideas. Certainly everybody knows about bedtime stories and reading with your um, child right before they go to bed, but not only for the purpose of reading, but also it's a great calm down activity. You know, maybe they want, they want to watch a show and then after the show's put away, then we read a book together and that can help your, your child's body calm down and be more ready to relax. It's also fun to read when you're running errands. Show them your grocery list. Show them, uh, help them, have them help you check it off. Show them a row of cereal and ask them which one starts with the letter P because that's the one we're buying today. So just let them see as you're running errands, you're reading all the time and they can read along with you. We want to read everyday items. We have shampoo bottles and toothpaste tubes. We have newspapers, magazines, the letters on the brown truck, UPS, everything that's around us, um, are we're reading all the time. And they can see and know that we're reading all the time when we read everyday items with them. Maybe you are waiting even at Starbucks and you can show them a menu and point out what it, the menu says. So everyday items are important uh, just as much as books are. And then just really keep it up. Don't stop. Uh, every, everything that's around us is, is in print. And so we want to read to them every day to show them how important it is. And just don't really give up. Maybe it's been like a week and we haven't been really good readers this week. This, the next week, set a goal. We're going to read you know, one book every morning while we're brushing our teeth. Um, or read to them when they're in the bath. There's just so many times that we can give them some you know, connection to the written word. So we'll give some tips for before you read. Kids love to choose books. So I'm not sure if you've ever been to a library with your student. If you haven't, our Thousand Oaks Library and the Newberry Park Branch um, are excellent libraries. Our Thousand Oaks Library actually has a whole children's section um, with fish tanks, but also with tons of books and puppets. Um, you don't, you know, sometimes I don't even like to check out library books because it's really hard to remember to return them. You can go to the library and visit and not leave with a book uh, and just stay there for, you know, half an hour and read together. They have comfy seats and little tables. Um, they have a little carpeted area all over the place, and it's just a great place to go. So let them choose their books um, to read together. Find a special place like the library or in your backyard on a blanket or um, on a, a bench on a walk that you go on, but just a, a little special place that they like to read. Some kids like to read in a little tent. You can even read under the table. 
Uh, so sometimes finding a special place to read will make reading more fun. Uh, maybe your kiddo is like, I don't want to read a book because maybe they want to be on their iPad. But you can say, but if we read a book, we can read a book, you know, in this special place um, that maybe they don't, they've never gotten to. Let's go in daddy's office and let's read a book together. So you can find that special place. And while you're reading, talk about the pictures. The pictures are the first place where they're developing meaning. Ask them to predict what's happening. What do they see? How many people do they see? What colors they see? Just really talk up what, we automatically pick up on in a book and draw them to those details. Where do you think they're going? What's giving you a clue? And um, have them make predictions. So really talking about those pictures. And then this next section, like we want reading to be fun and exciting. So be dramatic. Use your voices. I was talking to one of our counselors and she was sharing about how her kids love when she uses the voices. And then later on, she heard her daughter reading to her son and she was using the voices and she's only six years old. So it gives a big impact um, when we're dramatic and we show that we're really invested in what we're reading. Books for TK and K age students often have repetition. They may have a rhyme, they may have a song, they uh, may be easy to predict or they may repeat a phrase. So invite your kiddo to repeat that phrase with you or to say the rhyming word as the next line. We can invite them to join in with you. And then even though they can't read the word, they've said the word as part of the story. Um, ask them questions. Ask them questions about connections they're making themselves. Like what are they, what do, what do they think about what the character is doing? Or if the character is going to a special place, ask them if they would like to go to that place. But then also say, wow, what was the problem in this book and how did they solve it? So ask meaningful questions that give them the idea that we get information from books and we make connections with books. And then, as I said, you want to point to the words so that they can see that as what you're saying is connected to letters that are on the page. And those letters are grouped together to make words. And that's how they start creating more meaning and connecting that what we call the alphabetic principle. And then finally, after you read. Talk about what happened, close the book, make eye contact with them and say, what happened in this book? Or what was your favorite part of this book? Have them make a connection with the character in this book was wearing lots of funny hats. Do you like to wear funny hats? So take some part of the story um, or the book that you're reading and have them make a connection. And if you really love a book together, try to create your own version. Um, our son really loved a book called The Dragons Love Tacos. Do you know that book, Mrs. Stovall and Mr. Follett? So uh, that book, Dragons Love Tacos, we ended up turning it into lots of different books, right? We didn't necessarily make a whole book or write a whole book, but we talked about what if the dragons liked pizza? Uh, what would the details in the book be if dragons liked pizza? So giving, creating your own version of a story based on something that your kiddo likes um, that would be similar to what the character likes. So a couple more additional tips. Um, if you like one, if you like a book, you can find books from that same author and really start digging into um, what does it mean to be an author and what patterns do authors use when they're reading. Um, you know, this author writes books all about different animals and all these animals are friends. So really introduce the concept of being an author. Um, pace your reading. You want to read at the right fluency. You want to say the words um, the way that they would sound in natural language. If you come across words you're not sure your student knows um, or if you think might be a new word to them, talk about it. Build their vocabulary. Um, maybe they'll ask you what it is and you can give them some real world examples. Draw a picture about the book. They could draw a picture of them with the character. You can draw a picture of what happened. Your, your kiddo can tell you, oh, uh, you can say, what part of the book do we should we draw a picture about? And they can tell you and you can draw it for them. So just make reading this really fun, engaging experience because there's going to be lots of books at school 
and we want them to be familiar with books and we also want them to enjoy books and so when they enjoy it with you those most important people in their life then they'll enjoy it um, when they come to school also so last little tips about integrating reading into your routine read everything read the things that are all around you bring books wherever you go keep books in your car keep books in your purse in your backpack um keep books all over the place when you're waiting in the doctor's office there's typically books there um, but you can also bring your books with you it's important to just have them handy if you learn about something in a book, see if you can create an experience that will help them connect even further with that book. It could be as simple as going, if you read a book about trees, going around and looking at trees in your neighborhood. It could be something as big as going to a science museum to learn more about dinosaurs. So it, it can be as much or a big or as little as works for your family, but books can inspire us to learn more about something else. I already shared about our awesome libraries, and I strongly encourage you to go. If you don't have a library card, you're still welcome, but um, you are also welcome to get a library card, um, and that can be a first level in independence and responsibility for your kiddo. Um, play games with words and letters. That's fun to, you know, start with a word like cake and then start changing the beginning letter and say take and make and fake and all the words that start with it. So really play those games. Also play games um, that use words and letters to manipulate and for kids to be able to play with. And then lastly, um, it's called like the cooking show effect. So our kids need to hear a lot of language. And so really in doing laundry and doing dishes. Maybe you are um, at the grocery store again. Maybe you guys um, are going to a special place. Tell your kiddo what you're doing. Mom's got to do laundry. First, we're going to sort our laundry into colors. I make a dark pile over here. I make a light pile over here. Then I put all the towels together over here. So it sounds like to you kind of boring because not, I mean, maybe some people love laundry, not me, um, but you've made it something interesting and you're explaining what you're doing. And then later on, they'll hopefully know what to do, but you want to just make what you're doing like a cooking show. When we watch um, cooking shows as adults, they're explaining every little thing they're doing. Even they'll say like, all right, I'm going to pick up the pan and take it over to the sink. So, you know, that's the kind of talking that you can do with the everyday things that you do with your life. So now we want to share some of these preparations, making the transition easier. Alex, you in the Q&A, you predicted our next uh section. So we want to give you um, some tips and tricks on preparing for that first day of school. Right. This can be an exciting time for all of you. It can be a nervous time for you, your children, especially if you're coming to a new school that you've never been to before, becoming a part of a new community. Maybe your child has never gone to any sort of uh, preschool or classes. And so it, there's a lot to prepare them for. So we suggest that you want, you start talking about it early and often. Talk about what to expect, right? So you want to take your child um, with you to, or sorry, talk to your child about the school and the fun things that they might do. So maybe you can tell them they're going to get to sing or play, or there's outside time every day. They're going to make new friends. Um, there's going to be things for you to build with or to explore. All those things that um, you know are going to happen that they might not have any idea is going to go on. So we want to, again, like Dr. Sellers was saying, give them that language so they know what to expect. We want to get them excited about those new friends that they're going to meet. Imagine all these people that are going to be in their lives that they haven't gotten to know yet. And this is a great opportunity to talk about what qualities make somebody a good friend and, you know, things like why it's important to share, why it's important to wait your turn, why it's important to be kind. It's a good reason for when you're helping your child to learn those skills. Another super important thing we suggest you do is to visit the school before 
you know, many of you maybe have gone on tours um, with the principals of the schools that you've been looking at, but maybe the kids haven't been yet. So, you know, you could go after school while the gates might still be open or um, call the offices of the school and say, is there any way I could come by after school and bring my child? Or maybe you wait until this couple of weeks before school because they may have forgotten by now um, so, yeah, so if you take them in the springtime go back to that campus and just look at it and say, you know, maybe we don't know where your classroom is, but this is what the school is gonna look like just to give them that concept of where they'll be. And, you know, take away some of those fears that might come. We also think that it's super important for you to create a morning routine. This is often what we hear from parents is one of the hardest things for them to do because, you know, some days I wake up really tired and it's hard for me to get out of bed and I would rather hit my snooze button five more times, but I know I have a job I have to get to. So kids might not understand that as much as us adults who have that uh, background knowledge. So start a couple weeks before making sure you get up earlier because summertime we tend to be a little bit slow going in the morning. So we want to start a couple weeks with setting that morning routine, getting out of bed, using the restroom, brushing your teeth, eating your breakfast, getting dressed, getting yourself out the door in, an, in a certain amount of time. That will help with the predictability for your children and what to, for them to expect, then also kind of get them into that mode of like, okay, I get up, I can't go watch TV or I can't play on my iPad. I can't read a book. I can't um, you know, go outside, you know, you set that morning routine and make sure, especially those first few weeks that you're leaving enough time because it ends up taking longer than you think. You might receive from the schools a school supply list that aren't mandatory, but it's often fun for kids to pick out a few supplies, some pencils or a new backpack, maybe even a special outfit. Let them see that you value school and that you're excited for them to go. And by getting these new things, it often has your kid get a little bit more excited as well. So another big thing, as we talked about earlier, is you want to discuss with your children that the rules at school might be different than the last school that they were at or different than things at home, mostly because there's anywhere from 20 to 22 kids in their class. And so they have to learn that um, when there's a lot of kids, we can't be screaming at the top of our lungs or we can't, um, you know, sometimes we have to wait our turn and all those sort of things. So just kind of giving them that heads off, so heads up that it might be a little bit different and for them not to be caught off guard. So a week before you're getting closer, you've started all these new routines, Make sure you're practicing them and make sure that you're going over that morning routine and make sure that your child is understanding that this is what we're gonna be doing moving forward. Again, you wanna practice going to school. So maybe that morning routine literally is after you've done those things of getting up, brushing your teeth, using the restroom, maybe some of them make their bed, things like that, that then you actually get in, in the car or if you're close enough walk to the school and practice what that will feel like on the first day. Keep talking about what to expect. Remind them that they're going to be making new friends and having a teacher who will care about them and take care of them and make them safe. Let them know that even though they're going to be away from you that you're going to come back that at the end of the day Oftentimes I'll tell the students in my class that they do sometimes miss their, their grownups. And so I'll say, well, you know, mommy had to go to work. And so while well, this is kind of like your mommy has a job, this is your job and that sort of thing. But mom's going to come back at the end of the day or grandma's going to come back and get you or, you know, let them know that even though um, they're going to be away from you, that you'll always come back to get them. And again, remind them of those rules and expectations. School is a place where you can learn and grow and explore, but we also have to make sure we keep kids safe. So part of that is making sure that we walk in the classroom or you know, things that keep them safe. So just letting them know that there will be these boundaries. And again, as 
uh, we discussed earlier, this is why it's good to start now with letting them know that boundaries um, are important and limits and that sort of thing so they know what to expect when they get to school. A big one is to ask them how they're feeling. Some of them might be super excited right now in this one week before they can't wait. Some of them might be really nervous and teach them about those feelings and maybe empathize with them and let them know that you might be feeling the same way too. And that's okay, but that you'll get through it together. So then preparing for that big day, it's always super exciting and you will be full of lots of emotions. I'm absolutely sure these emotions are ones that we um, aren't always sure, maybe caught off guard, but you know, it's a great day nonetheless. So on that big day, remind your child of that morning routine, get them set, get them ready and on their way. And then make sure that you are ready to go. So by doing that, something we suggest is maybe the night before lay out their clothes so that you don't have to worry about it in the morning. When my daughter was little, she was very independent and wanted to choose what she wanted to wear. So I learned that I would make a layout two choices and she could make the choice of one to wear. And that seemed to help with our morning routine and making things go a little bit smoother, but we would do that the night before. Make sure that first day that you give yourself some extra time. Drop-offs and pickups at school um, can be a lot, especially in the beginning. Those first days of school, lots of parents are wanting to go and meet everybody's teacher and um, give yourself extra time. That would be a huge tip of us from us is that get there early because you're going to want to be able to find a parking spot and your child is not going to want to be late because that's going to make the separation even harder for them. So please make sure to give extra time. Drop-offs um, at schools look different time-wise and bell schedules, and you'll hear about that once um, the August rolls around. You'll hear from your school about what your particular drop-off will look like, where you can park, things like that. Every school is just a little bit different the way that they're built, and um, our bell scales, schedules are all different, too. So um, you'll get that information as the school year gets closer. Oftentimes, too, the teachers um, do an early uh, back to school night for kindergarten or TK children, or at least send out some information to help that drop off and um, pick up be smooth those first few days. Something else you can do on the that big day is first day is make sure you're packing them in their lunch boxes, some of their favorites, right? If they really like goldfish, or if they really love a peanut butter sandwich, or they really want turkey, whatever it is, Put those special foods into their lunch box or to their snack so they can feel excited and again not something that they're not um, haven't seen before make sure another big one is to go over that backpack sometimes kids don't remember where you put their lunch even though you told them you're going to put it in their backpack actually show them show them where their food is show them um, where their water bottle might be or show them that in their bag is an extra set of clothes or whatever it is, show them, go through and show them where everything is so they can be familiar with that. You can even teach them how to open their backpack to how to unzip it and even how to put it on because some of these guys are, are little and the backpacks are three-fourths their size. And so um, helping them even how to put it on is a great skill to teach them as well. And we actually have like a kindergarten teacher in our webinar, and she just shared another part of that is zipping and unzipping is also containers. If you pack them a lunch, make sure that you're using little plastic or glass or metal containers that they can open and close on their own. And um, maybe even like the applesauce pouches with the tourney top, you want to stop opening it for your student if they're going to take those to school and teach them how to open it, how to get some leverage on there. Um, and make sure that they, you know, are capable of, of getting into their own things. She also said to set a timer so they don't run out of time to eat and play. That's very funny. Our students usually have about 15 to 20 minutes to eat. Um, and for some kids are social eaters. And so they're going to talk and talk and talk and talk. And then when it's time to transition to play, 
they maybe didn't eat their lunch. And so when they get home, you're going to open their lunchbox and say, you didn't eat anything. And they're not even really going to know why, because time will have gone so fast because they were having so much fun with their friends. So just remind them and you can, like she suggested, you could set a little timer. Okay, we're going to sit down and eat lunch together, but we're going to eat within 15 minutes and have them practice that. So those are great suggestions. Thank you, JC. And just know on that, that sometimes your kids will still come home with food that they didn't eat. So that's why it's even more important to pack those favorite things because they might just only choose a few things right that day. And, um, you know, but don't be surprised if they don't eat at all. And that's OK. Um, the last thing that you we want to talk about on this slide here is saying goodbye appropriately. We have been. I myself have been in the field of education a long time, and I've seen many highs and lows of children and parents um, on that first day of school. Like I said before, it is a day full of emotions. And if you can start preparing your child for this big day, it's going to make that goodbye easier. And please trust your teacher when they tell you how they want you to say goodbye. It might just be at the door because if you come into the classroom, it might make it harder. They might, you know, it, like I said, each class will be different on how the teachers do that, but make sure that you say goodbye and you do what the teacher's asking you to do because it's only gonna make that transition easier for your child. And most times we find that if a child is sad or not wanting to leave, they come into the classroom and they start having so much fun that they forget and they go right about their day. Teachers are very great about communicating with teachers about how that first day went. Um, they can to send you an email and say, hey, Joey's really having a fun time. Just wanted to let you know. So just work on that goodbye and prepare your child. That's another thing that you will not be staying. This is big kids school and only kids get to go there. And so for today, um, I'm gonna have to leave and I'll, but remember, I'll be back at the end of the day for you. All right, so that is um, the meat of our presentation, but we did wanna share with you this quick reference sheet. And for everybody who attended, we'll also be emailing you the uh, quick reference sheet uh, next week. So just wanted to give you the one, two, three, four, our daily four for our TKK kiddos. One, I knew you would know it because we've been talking about it so much, but read together, read books, read signs, read the store, read everything together. Practice. Practice their name, saying their name, saying their name loud. If they go to the cafeteria, they're going to need to say their name when they check out. So help them practice saying their first name and their last name, but also practice those letters for those incoming kindergarten students. Practice colors, shapes, numbers, practice your skills. Present challenges. That's back to that uh, playing games, um, experiencing disappointment, uh, maybe not winning all the time. Maybe they um, sometimes will fall down um, and, and just make sure that they're ready to be challenged, but not always also to be successful. So to have a little um, bit of disappointment and to try hard things. And last, play with purpose. Take them places to play, have them play with toys that give them a purpose. You can see this little one is playing in a kitchen, but it can be even something as simple as being at a restaurant with the silverware that's on the table. You can build a little fork fort. So have them play with purpose to build things, make things, try things, um, but also act things out. So in, let them enjoy this time before they start TK and K so that when they're ready to come to school, they're also enjoying learning from their teacher. So I want to thank you so much for coming this evening. Um, we are here for you. If you have any questions um, after this presentation, please feel free to email me at the school district office. We want to support you as you make this transition. You probably know there are two more sessions. Our next session will be in April and it will be led by our elementary counselors. And then we will be back for one more session um, as we get ready to go to summer with fun summer things to do for your TKK kiddo.
So thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you in April at our next presentation. Oh, yes, the slides. I will also be emailing the slides to all the participants. So thank you for asking that question. All right, everyone. Good night. Thank you so, so much. It was good to see you all.